In our last episode, you'll know Dan and I made it to Millimilla Falls. We ended up doing the waterfall circuit, so we got to see some beautiful sights. We were very lucky and even saw a platypus at one of the waterfalls. After that, we made it to Cardwell State Forest and checked out the swimming holes there. The dogs absolutely loved it. It's a really good dog-friendly place. We then made it back to Lucinda where we did some reverse seared tomahawk steaks, which were beautiful. And now we're going to go exploring and fishing in Lucinda. Dan and I are up nice and early in the morning. We're gonna go for a bit of a fish. If you leave it much later than nine or 10 o'clock, it gets way too windy and choppy with the water. And in a small boat with saltwater crocs in the water, we were not gonna risk that. So we're starting our fishing underneath Lucinda Jetty. So at this point, we've been sitting here for such a long time. We've tried both bait and lures and had no bites at all. No fish even on the sounder. We're thinking because there's been so much rain, maybe there's just too much fresh water in the system. I reckon it's a waterfall, I reckon it's just the sound of the waves hitting the beach. Oh, it's got a touch there. Yep. Oh, we got one. Oh no, snag. Got me excited there. Got something? Yep. Um, how about we just drive and get away from these midges, eh? I feel like it's just not going to work when we get in the evening light. So when we got to the mangroves, we started seeing these really ugly looking things. We have never seen anything like them before. They can actually walk out onto land and still be totally fine and then go back in the water and then be swimming underneath. So what the hell are they? Because they are the oddest looking things. Let's go catch ourselves a fish. So we're pretty sure that fish that we just looked at was literally the only fish there because we did not see anything on the sounder, nothing took our baits, nothing else tried to go for our lures. We trolled up and down as well, but we're not having very much luck so far this morning. Well, fancy that, eh? You got a big hit first cast, not one after that. So 
so we just got back from fishing underneath the Lucinda jetty and around the mangroves and stuff didn't catch anything I missed one we actually saw it only like a meter off the boat and my line was actually my lure was actually fouled and all of a sudden it like jumped straight over and we both saw it so hopefully the GoPro did catch it um, when we came back to the boat ramp though we spoke to one of the local guys and when I told him that he was actually quite in shock because he reckons most people aren't actually catching fish at the moment just with how much fresh water is actually coming in it sort of made the fishing not really very good um, so we're going to try and wake up even earlier tomorrow, go back to that part of the mangroves where we actually did see that fish and we did see a few fish jumping and try in the morning even earlier. We're just going to bring our little like um, a fly nets for our heads because the midges and stuff was so bad. It's probably not going to stop them, but it might make it ever so slightly better. Um, but yeah, so hopefully we might get some more luck tomorrow. We're going to head to the waterfalls, I think in another couple of hours. So hopefully that'll be nice and refreshing because it's already about 37 degrees and it is super humid. So yeah, better luck tomorrow. I think that would have to be one of the nicest lookouts we've seen, I reckon. Right, eh? Look at all those mountains that look so pretty. Best lookout we've seen so far. The shame's still a bit hazy, you can probably see all the way like, to the coast. Mm. Alright. Pedestrians only crossing the road is clear. We would assume that would be a given, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Not looking at that. Crazy, eh? Holloman Falls is the highest permanent single drop waterfall in Australia, measuring at 269 metres. Although there is water flow all year round, wet season is the best time to view the falls as they are at their strongest and the loudest. charcoals but just get something like similar to these just some white baguettes and then cut it in half and I've lined it with butter already and then you can put some garlic and stuff like that over the top of it as well and then what you want to do is get some beef mince add all your spices and stuff inside doesn't look too appealing at the moment but once it's actually cooked it should be really good and then all you do is take the tops of the buns off and then do a really thick layer of cheese all the way down the bottom of the bases. Alright, so don't be too stingy with the cheese because the cheese is hopefully what's going to keep the sort of the beef patty kind of stuck onto the bread. So the next thing is, as best as you can, slide the patty onto the top and then squish him down. So he's like that. Now obviously the thicker it is, the longer you're going to have to cook it. Dan's one's way thicker than mine, so we're putting his one on a little bit earlier. And then take it to the charcoal that you've already got heated. And then literally put him straight down and a little squish. 
and then let him cook. Alright, so now that they're both in, I'm just going to place the lid on just so it actually cooks the thick part of the beef in the middle. And then give it a few minutes and then we're going to flip it and cook the bread side underneath as well. Alright, so now that they're fairly cooked, just get your little flipper and then flip that one over. Doesn't matter if you lose, lose bits and pieces. And then these ones will only need a minute or two just to really cook that bread. And then once we actually start adding all the fillings and stuff in it, then the tops of the buns, we're just gonna then sit back inside as well just so that they get nice and cooked as well. Once they're cooked, slide underneath. And then pop them over somewhere else just to actually get all the fillings and stuff on. And then with the lids, just quickly pop them in for a minute or two just to get a little bit brown. And then you can flip them halfway through. And then depending what you want on yours, you always do a little bit of Dijonais. Do you want that on yours? Yeah. Got tomato as well? Yeah. And then flip the bread. <laughs> Might have done slightly too much on Dan's one. Alright, once they're cooked on top, take them off. And then we're going to go inside and we're going to cut them in half and enjoy eating them. Yum yum. So the bugs here are so much worse than what they were yesterday. So I'm putting on my head net. Dan kind of has a little bit of laugh at me here about how stupid I look, but we'll see at the end of this fishing trip who has less midgy bites on them. Run away. Something right in there. It's jumping before. If you want anything, oh, you not have it because you won't look cool. No. Mm -hmm. No, I'm fine. They don't worry me that much. Mm. 
Hmm. How have we not got a fish yet? Do you want to try and throw some bread in for a bit? Try on bait. Okay. I can just sit here and burly back into that creek there. And give it 10 minutes and we'll head out and try near the boat ramp before this weather turns. What do you reckon? As soon as the old girls don't seem to be working. Billy, Billy, Billy. Really up. in for our second time at the cinder and again we're unsuccessful. Saw Damn. heaps more fish though, like heaps more activity jumping and stuff like that. Had the crab pot in, nothing. Just got raped by midges and you get blown off the water by about nine o'clock so you only get probably an hour worth of fishing in at best. So probably might head to Crystal Creek in Savo go for a swim, try and get a jungle perch and maybe come back here a bit later and find a nice spot off the bank in the shade, it'd be good. Chicken box. Can't even really see them on your hands, they're there but... So at our last place that we stayed at for the one night before we got to Lucinda, we actually ended up hitting something at night time, which we actually thought was a bat, but um, I th we think it was a bird because for the last four days of intense tropical heat and humidity, like, you know, nearly near 40 degrees, every time we got near the car, it just stunk. And we kept thinking, how the hell can this town possibly stink every freaking place every, we went to? It was we got, like <laughs> completely vile and we couldn't figure out why the hell. So we just figured out why. I'll turn the camera around so you can see. We've just gone and gotten a stick to get it. But um, I don't know if you can see, but there's a dead bird carcass in there. And that is what is smelling completely rank. So we're gonna try and get it out. Stick didn't work, so we're having to use some good old gloves. No more stink everywhere we go now. Thank God. There's maggots everywhere. Oh, it's not focusing. Oh, yeah. 
So a little bit down from where the big Crystal Creek is, is Crystal Water Day Use. It's a really nice rocky area with a little bit of water. It is dog friendly, great for kids because it's nice and shallow. So we went for a little mini four wheel drive over some of these rocks and then also went fishing afterwards as well. Happy Bill? You'll love this place, Levi. Lots of rocks to pick up. Go, Levi, keep kicking. Zill, don't be a turd. Pretty spot this one. We're surrounded by water all along this way. And there's more all the way down here too. So nice and clear to swim in. forward driving through all these little rocky sort of little roads definitely can't do it in two-wheel drive but we've gotten to this really beautiful spot that we're hoping might have some fishing Come on. Come on. Nice of those rocks here. Oh, see them there? What are they? They're not jungle perch, they're some other fish.
Okay. So today has been a really visual day. It's just been raining on and off. So whenever we find a really nice big open area where it's dog friendly or a dog off leash area, we always take them out and give them a really good run. They're always locked up inside the back of that car, obviously on travel days. So they always go a little bit loopy if they don't get out and get their energy out. We also find it's just a bit easier when you're stopping for that next night. They're already ready for bed because they're quite tired from having a good run instead of being full of energy stuck in the car. Sash. Up. Good girl, Sash. Go down. Down. Sasha, down. Go down. Good girl. Good girl, Levi. Hey. Good girl. Ready, Zill? Go, Levi. Good girl. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Poor thing. It was wet and she fell. You're right, Levi. Hop out of there. You might hurt yourself. Hey. Good girl. In get Zil. Come Zil. You're better balanced. In you get. Good girl. Poor old Levi just did a 360 in there because the pipe was bloody wet. But luckily she's all good. Tough as nails this dog. So I stop eating grass. It's thirsty, eh girls? Poor Sasha's head's getting squished. Oh, there's another thing. Marriage waiting about time. Town Round this is a triple Bloody L. Storm and cyclone tip. Shed X Townsville. Townsville's number one shed builder. Experts in design and construct. This storm is huge. Check with council to see if you live in an evacuation zone. So Compile a list across. of emergency numbers and keep it somewhere it's visible to everyone along with your emergency kit. Oh, Ensure like sure everyone yeah, listens to the radio and across. knows how to tune into warnings Tomorrow, and act. Triple M. Harvey Norman have everything you need to make your house a home. Exclusive designs, quality made choices. And Here at Yasso Point at the Don River mouth. And we're throwing some bait in just to try and see if we can get some fish before we stop at our next point. So fingers crossed, we'll be in for some luck. I'm so excited. It's open. Yep. 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 No. I don't even think my one landed, like it went in before it actually fit. Feels a little. It almost feels like a brim, to be honest. The way that they've got those little picky. Boom. 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 Yeah. See? Oh, that's big fish. Fucking dark. Oh, go on the bread that you proved. No, it, it's something else. Yeah, but he's eating the bread. He's eating the bread. I can see him. I can see him. Hmm. 
Yeah, right there. Oh, it's a tiny little brim. Yeah, I'm alright. Big scratching them. Really? Oh, no. oh man, that came my back, eh? Oh, I landed like right in the corner. What, three? Landed right in the corner of my back. Ah! I'm all pissed about my glasses. Do they? They don't have a replacement thing. Where's the crack? Lucky it's up high, so it probably won't affect oh, it. Oh, scratch. Okay, that's good. I thought you were going to actually crack. Yeah. Oh, let me check your back. That's alright. It's just going to bruise like a motor. Okay. <laughs> I'll be right. <laughs> like we must get fish. <laughs> Don't stop. Oh, you poor bugger. You're going to dunk your hand in the water, right? Yeah. I should have known better. It looks slippery. <laughs> so poor old Dan just had a slip down the rocks and nearly broke his back. He smashed part of his glasses up, got a good scratch, and somehow his wash, his watch flicked off his arm when he bloody fell. The watch is broken. But we felt, oh, what it's broken? Yeah. Oh, you must have hit it on the rock when you fell. Yeah. Oh, shit, That's this right. is an expensive trip. New glasses, new watch. It's all right, it'd be easy to fix it, a jaw or a watch repair. Fairly. I must have fallen on it. That's why, look how badly bruised it is. It must have fallen on it. She's on. She's on. Oh, and we got a fish. Told you they felt like a broom. <laughs> right, so we finally had a bit of luck here at Bowen. Em's got a nice broom. Just on a little bit of bread. You beauty. So before the next clip, I had whinged that I didn't want Dan to throw the broom into the water from the bank in case it hurt the fish. But he didn't really want to go down on the rocks after he'd just fallen. So like any good husband, he knew that this was a battle he wasn't going to win. So he didn't argue and he agreed with his wife and went down those exact same rocks again. But not without whispering some words beforehand, kind of forgetting that he was filming. Go to fight another day. See you later, mate. Broken back, broken watch, and the broken sunny is worth it. Got a little fish. I think we caught the only two fish in the river. Two's better than none. Oh. Aren't you lucky? I said, keep going. 
Oh, it's another broom. Still. You went hard. <laughs> hey. Last cast. Put ourselves another fish. Alright, we're just packing up now because the weather is starting to settle in. But we managed to get two brim, Dan got, and then I only got one brim. But still much better than some of the other places we've been fishing. And it's such a beautiful place. It's just a shame that the weather is looking completely terrible.